Welcome to Comfort Avenue number two, Instagram. Nice to have you still here. So this is Bound Fighting. And in your lifetime, let me put this little disclaimer on here. I don't want anybody hunting me down telling me that I'm teaching shit. So in your lifetime, in real life, you will more than likely never have your hands tied to fight. So we're going to go from the back first, just for the record. Fighting with your hands bound behind you is a hell of a lot harder than fighting with your hands bound in front of you. So in this video, I will attempt to do a few kicks and give you some download on this. So first and foremost, let's get this straight. I've been doing martial arts since I was seven years old. Prior to that, I fought in the streets, not by choice. It was by course or by force, and more or less, it was like by force. So that being out of the way, I've never had to fight like this, but I've trained like this for years. I've been training with my hands behind my back and in front of me tied up since I was about anywhere between 10 and 11 years old because every bit of fighting advantage that you can have, every bit of knowledge that you can obtain will be necessary on your journey into the martial arts world. I got my hands bound behind me for the simple fact to prove a point that you can still fight. I just don't recommend that you try it. If you haven't been trained properly in martial arts, don't just go off randomly trying to do shit that you see on TV. Because you can get hurt really badly. Don't go off doing shit that you see on my videos. I have been trained. All right? Am I a black belt? No. Have I beaten black belts? Hell yes. But not with my hands behind my back. However, it is highly possible. So as I've made videos like this before, I would like to tell you the truth on this shit. If your hands are behind your back, it's probably best that you don't attempt to do anything stupid. But if you must, you must keep your martial arts to basics, which is what we're going to do right now. So, guys coming at you, momentum is a thing. Sidestep and knee. For those who have taken Taekwondo or Thai fighting, you can pretty much improvise from there. Sidestep and knee. You'll be amazed at the things you can do with the knee and some torque. Boom! You know, if you get the good power behind that knee your target is the solar plexus and if you're short like me then go a little lower there's a bug in my eye and I can't untie my hand fast enough to get it out <laughs> sorry can't improvise live TV people it's definitely a bug not the hair God damn it. okay maybe it's the hair <laughs> now so we're gonna keep it basic, all right? And then keeping it basic, you are, or if you're not a martial artist, then here's your chance to learn. Your basic front kick, boom. Your basic axe kick. It's pretty much the same thing, except for the axe kick, the power is when you come down. Your front kick, it's either or, you know? Your jumping front kick. Okay, left leg. Your jumping front kick. Your axe kick. All right? So in doing those, you have to understand those are your first two front basic kicks. Guys coming, you're stepping side, and when you step, your left foot behind your right to build the torque, extend the right foot. Same thing on the other side. Your right behind your left. I have a hip replacement, so forgive me, it's not going to look as professional. So you extend your left foot. All right? Those are your basics. Remember, my hands are high on my back. Inside to outside crescent kick, we're going to go left first. So I'm in this stance. My right foot will pivot a tiny bit to build that momentum. Inside to outside with the right foot. My left foot will also pivot just a tiny bit. Now, now out here in wet grass, is a very bad idea to be practicing anything with your hands tied. And here's the one kick you will not need, and let's pray that I don't have to go to the hospital after this. This is a jumping spinning back kick. Please do not attempt this. Okay? Now, as you can see, there will be some other challenges when your hands tie. So, you probably won't need this sequence either. Get ready. Now, see how easy it was that I almost fell. But you're never going to have to use that. And if we're really honest, you're never going to have to fight like this in your lifetime. Unless you are a very unlucky individual. 
So let's move up to the front. All right. So there are levels of uh, boundness. This is the easiest level because it gives you space. This part, not so much. And if you watch any of my other videos on Facebook or YouTube, um, I teach you how to block with both hands. It was kind of hard to block with both hands high and behind your back. That's not impossible, but again, your hands are behind your back. Let's keep the shit logical. It's gonna be kind of difficult to block. You see, I had to come out of here to wipe the hair and the bug out of my eye. So let's start with your basic blocks first. Let me give you a side view. So up, down, middle, and then incorporate your leg. Up, middle, down, all right? Over here, up, middle, down, up, middle, down. Now, the reason why I did that is because, again, whatever side you're on, whatever is your dominant side, is probably going to be your lead side when your hands are tied up. So, you're going to have to get used to that. And as you see, I tighten it up. So, we'll come one run down. Now, personally, I would tell you that if you had to fight someone and you hit them in the throat with this thing, and then get behind them and squeeze until they pop. Technically, that would be murder, so don't do that. But you can still jab them in the throat and cut off the air. And as they go down, you grab them by the tuft and then just ram your knee into them. That would be the logical stuff. Also, it probably get you in trouble with the law. But I'm not going to say you shouldn't do it either. Except for that whole choking them thing. Don't do that. That will definitely get you in trouble. So let's go with basics. So you gotta learn how to block. So you're gonna block. You have to get both of these hands to work as a simultaneous unit. Boom. So when you go right, boom. So you see how that works. You have to have your blocks all straight and ready to go. So block, 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 block. Also, your legs can be blocked by themselves. So if you're blocking this way, someone comes in for a foot sweep, you can lift your foot so they can go under it and pray they don't sweep this one. If they got long legs, they're probably going to take you down. So you don't want that. But in that event that they do, jump back and throw your feet forward. So when they're charging at you, you drop kick them. That's pretty much the, the gist of that. Do I recommend that? Not really. But it is necessary sometimes. Now, for learning your combos for front kicks while you are fighting. You will never need to do this, but in the events that you have to, I'm going to show you that it actually can be done. No reverse tornado kicks, just a regular tornado kick in a sequence. So, boom, boom. Now here, when you get here, you should immediately follow back. So let's try it again with the immediate follow back. Boom, boom. That wasn't immediate. I got caught up in something. So now we go left legged. I slipped. So I had to improvise. Alright, so let's do combos. So block, push off, kick, kick, step back. Block. Ah, oh, shit, that was a kick. Okay, so block, kick, elbow. Those combinations are pretty decent. They look better from the side. So block, kick, elbow. Now in doing elbows, you have to know the distance of your hands. So that if you do an elbow, you'll be able to get that shit right. Your target, always target the solar plexus. What I'm about to say is gonna be very offensive, but I'm gonna say it anyway. All right, the reason why I tell people to target the solar plexus I'm a very small individual. The bigger you are, the harder you're going to hit me. I'm not going to lay there and let that happen. So if you can't breathe, you can't hurt me. That's why you target the solar plexus. All right? Now, if you're under 5'3", you can target anywhere you want. But I prefer you target the solar plexus. If you're like 4'11", or 4'9", uh... The nether regions is a great opportunity. But make sure you hit them with everything you got because you might just piss the person off. And nine times out of ten, when somebody gets hit in the nether regions, they automatically bend over. 
So that's when you make your move and you knead them in the forehead just above the bridge of the nose. Do not knead them in the bridge of the nose. Knead them up here. It's going to hurt your knee. If possible, knead them in the nose or knead them in the chin. Do not knead them here. It's highly likely that you will probably kill them by accident. So you don't want to do that. All right. You all know the ninja BS punch. You know, um, you got a better chance of the Buddha strike, the double palm, whatever the hell you want to call it, versus this ninja um, crush the skull into the brain thing or crush the nose into the brain thing. Don't do that. There's a high chance that that shit might work. There's a high chance that shit might kill somebody. I'm not here to teach you that. I'm here to teach you about fighting with your hands tied. All right. So, you guys charging at you, and the only kick you got is that, then do that. Because it's the only kick you got. It might be the only chance you have, too. After that kick, he's going that way, you're running that way. With your hands tied. Yes, you can run with your hands tied. Watch enough videos, you'll see. Anyway, we're not here to run. We're here to rumble. So, knowing how your hands work together as a unit for blocking is very important. Knowing how your hands work with the weapon together as a unit is more important. See how I almost lost that? So learning that bow staff, and you see how I lost that. You see how quickly I recovered. That's something that happens in training a lot. You never get it right on the first time, and you're gonna learn the hard way. You're training this way. It's only as good as the person teaching you. So there, and yes, I did just cluck myself in the head. I understand that you're never really gonna whirl a stick in a fight. You're not doing this shit. Not in real combat. Mm -hmm. You might not get the chance. So you got your stick, your hands are bound, and we're gonna operate, and it's not gonna be a full flurry, cause I'm old, and um, I'm not as good as I used to be. Well, at least I'm not as fast as I used to be. Anyway, so you're gonna work on a little bit of a flurry, but it's not gonna be excessive, all right? So first we whirl, then we strike, Very easy to lose control. So from this position, I kind of got myself hung up in something. So I can't really do the push off strike because I'm caught up in this rope. So I have to learn how to maneuver, maneuver, manipulate this damn stick while my hands are tied. As you can see in slow-mo, you know, I'm here going this way. I can go this way. I can go this way. Make it like an oar when you're canoeing. You know, because that's the thing. But what I actually did was I jabbed out, I brought it up, I swung, I got it under my arm, I tucked it, and I came back. Those are strikes. So it's like boom, 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 boom. Nine times out of ten, you're not going to do all that whirling. So it would more look like this. Boom, 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 boom. Now, but you got to remember your hands are tied. So when your hands are tied, that whirl just cost me an arm. So you just want to keep it basic. Boom, 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 boom. That's a reflex. I've been doing martial arts too long. So that's a reflex. Automatically put it back where it's supposed to be. When your hands are tied, you have to learn to not follow your reflexes. However, muscle memory is a thing and an instinct. Now you see how I lost it. I just don't feel like bending down to pick the damn thing up. And the grass is wet, so that's preventing my trick. So, now the whole stick's completely wet. So now there's no telling where this thing's gonna go. That's called a recovery. Now you see why you can't really do a lot of fancy shit while your hands are tied.
Mm -hmm. Enough said? So, what did you learn? You learned that whirling a stick with your hands tied is not impossible, but highly dangerous and could seriously injure yourself in the process. But now that I have a weapon, my hands are tied and my feet are not. So now we do another flurry. Boom, boom, boom. That's a short flurry. That was for you Taekwondo but dudes. Cause you know Taekwondo you have those uh those little little sharp kicks. I gave up on Taekwondo when I couldn't earn a belt, but I keep the kicks. Yeah. Happens. Now we're gonna end this video on Kung Fu Havoc number two. I hope you guys here on um, Instagram like what you saw. Um, I want to do more of these videos. I just don't know. I'm not. I don't have a lot of followers on Comfort Havoc Number Two.